In this video, you will witness miniature basing beyond your wildest expectations. Perfection in miniature form. My magnum opus of dirt. I'm talking great ground, top-notch topography, a dominion of domain. I will show you a sneak peek, but you will have to keep watching to see exactly how I pulled it off. Was it cool? I actually haven't seen it yet, or done it yet. Nick's gonna edit it so that you guys see it, but I haven't seen it, but then you're gonna see it, but whatever, we're gonna start the video. Hey guys, welcome to Eons of Battle. I, J. Bartholomew Schillen, love basing models. You'd think. But as hard as I try, sometimes projects get away from me. I firmly believe that a model is not done until it is based, but that is easier said than done sometimes. Sometimes I just do not get my models based. I don't have a problem when it's models for my armies. The need to get models finished so they can be used in game, the promise of tabletop time does a good job of lighting a fire under me to get those models 100% finished. Case in point, recently I have been banging out kill teams, and they are all painted and they are all based. Each one of these forces made for a fun painting and basing challenge, and the sisters in particular got my basing juices flowing. I tried a lot of stuff with the snow and I'm really pleased with the results, and it made me think of some other models that could use some Winter Wonderland bases. Some models have languished for months, maybe even years. I'm talking about my Kato Sicarius and my Badass Santa. These models were both painted live here on YouTube. By the way, I stream painting every night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central, please come hang out, and I never finished them. I think the real reason is that they are not really for gaming. These models are painted for display and without the need to finish them, I never actually did finish them. Which is a shame because they may be some of the best models I have ever done. This guy, Kato Sicarius, I painted way back in February and it is easily one of the best paint jobs I have ever done. And it goes to show that miniature painting progression is not a perfect graph because I have painted plenty of things since this trying very hard that are not this good. Really, my scale would look a little bit more like this than like this. But this guy is exceptional. I super duper love how he turned out, and I never even took him off of the wooden block. As soon as I finished him, I thought, great, I get to move on to something else, and he went into a drawer. I tried a whole bunch of things on this model, and it's reminding me of some things that I should maybe bring back into my repertoire. I remember I actually used a zebra brush pen marker that had a brush tip, and I actually used that to blackline a lot of the details on his banner. Love a good back banner, they should bring that back. But, super duper love this model, and it is time, it is beyond time to get this guy properly finished. And Badass Santa. This is a miniature from Anvil Industries, and it is absolutely exceptional. I painted this guy way back last December. Holy cow, how time flies. And yeah, definitely when I painted this, it was one of the best things I had ever painted, and I think currently it is still up there with top shelf paint jobs. I really, really love this model. I love his teddy bear covered in Christmas lights. I love his grenades and gas masks. When I was working on this guy, I was really in love with high contrast paint styles, and I can really, really see some of the inspirations that I drew while painting this model up. It really, really looks slick. And I tried to keep it to a minimum palette, a little bit of green, red, some tans in the skin, but I think I did a really, really good job of rendering this model. I super duper love it. And of course, I loved it so much that I put it right into a drawer and forgot about it for a year. This guy desperately needs to go on a base, and you know what? His little elf friends are gonna come along for the ride. So the time has come. These models have languished for too long. It is time to get them finished up properly. And I do mean properly. I am going to pull out all the stops, every trick I know how to do. This is going to be epic. Dirt, snow, rocks, bullet casings, icicles. These models are epic and I'm not gonna let them down in the final step. I am going to base these models so well that the bases are going to be better than the paint jobs on these models. I need to get out all my basing supplies for this one. Let's go to the drawers!
And I get to use a bunch of different basing sizes for this project, and I'm super excited. A nice big 40 millimeter for Cato Sicarius, a 32 millimeter for Santa Claus, and some 25 millimeters for his elves. The first step is going to be picking out some nice pine bark nuggets, and I'm going to be applying them with a material I don't use that often, some good old fashioned hot glue. I went through the bag looking for pieces of pine bark that would make good rocks for my models to stand on. These guys are pretty small, so they don't need anything big. I think a long skinny pride rock looking piece for Santa and something a little more substantial for Kato. I selected my nuggets and it was time to glue them down. I find pine nuggets are super useful for basing and terrain and are nice to have lying around in the materials drawer. I shaved down parts of the bark with some sandpaper in preparation to glue them down. On Santa's rock, I want it sticking out of the ground, so I sanded it down quite a bit. Then I applied some pipe and hot glue and stuck it down to the bark. There really isn't a better glue for this than hot glue. It does a good job of bonding the slick plastic with the rough wood, and it does it in seconds. On Kato's base, I wanted to make a nice overhang, so I glued a little piece in the middle and then a big old piece of bark on top to give him a nice platform to stand on. Not very realistic, but it means he will look interesting from any angle. And there are my four bases, ready for the next steps. And as usual, I'm about halfway through the build project, and now, I'm gonna break out the cutting mat to protect my desk because I forgot. I broke out some milliput to fix up my rocks. I cut off two equal parts and squished them together with my fingers. Then I tore off small pieces and squished them onto my base and into the bark. Then I pressed them down hard with an old toothbrush. This will give them a nice rock texture. I did this on anything I thought would give away that they are pieces of wood and not rock. The milliput did not want to stick to everything, so I had to use a little bit of super glue here and there to keep it stuck. This was a fun step where I got to fuss with the bases and get them perfect. Milliput holds detail really, really well, and the toothbrush helped me shape and press down the putty. One great question I get asked all the time is why I use different goops for different applications. I just use Milliput to create a rock-like texture on these bases, and that is because Milliput, Grain Stuff, and Crayola Model Magic Soft Squishy Modeling Material, I'm not sponsored, but I wish I was, they all have different pros and cons. Milliput is really, really great because it takes detail amazingly. It can be smoothed with water and it dries rock hard. And so it's really, really good for rocks. It's really, really good for gap filling because you can sand it once it's dry, but it is pretty brittle, which is not a big deal if you're making rocks. But if you wanted to make a sword, that sword is gonna snap really, really quick. Green stuff is really, really great for putting it on a model and sculpting fine detail. If you want to create a purity seal or a tentacle or a cape or a banner or cloth, green stuff is going to be the thing to use. You glue this to your model and then you poke at it and perfect it with some dental tools or some silicone brushes and then you let that dry and that tentacle is not going to snap because it dries with kind of a rubbery, a hard rubbery finish. Crayola Model Magic Soft Squishy Modeling Material is great because it can really fill up some space. It doesn't hold detail particularly well, it doesn't sculpt, but it is really, really light and it is really cheap. This stuff is really great for filling up space in between cork or pieces of wood chip, and it is really, really good for terrain because it's so light. But all three of these things have their uses, they have their pros and their cons, and you kind of learn your way around using them the more projects that you take on. I prepared my sand and my favorite sand holder downer, wood glue. I spread this onto the bases with an old synthetic brush in preparation for my sand. I gave each base a sprinkling of some small pebbles, a dash of medium grain sand, and then a final dousing of fine grain sand. But you know what is never covered in sand? That's right, our Patreon. If you like the videos we make and you want more, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, some terrain STLs, and more. With that said, let's get back to those Arctic bases. These bases are looking good, and there is plenty of room for my models to stand on. And these are display models, so I decided to give the edges of the base a little sanding to make sure that they are perfect. Now on to painting. I decided to give them a black prime and work my way up from there. Then I took out some gray paint and a makeup brush and gave all four bases a nice dry brushing to bring out all the texture. Until this point, I've basically been doing all of the exact same operations on all these bases, and now they are properly base coated and sort of a zenithal thing going on with the light gray dry brush. But now I'm gonna deviate. The base for Kato Sicarius, I'm gonna paint with very, very cold colors. And for Santa and his elves, I'm gonna paint those bases with warmer colors. Not warm colors, but warmer colors. And I think that should give me two very different looking snow bases. And I'm gonna be using a very appropriate color for the ultramarines, Macrag Blue. 
I watered down the blue a lot and sent it through the airbrush. I sprayed this on the bottom and inside of the rock. Doing it this way helped me control just how blue my rocks will be. Then I took a dark brown into my brush similarly thinned and sprayed this on the tops. This in addition to my blue will make for a nice cold slight rock. Then I mixed my colors together to create a dry brush color that will be good match for the colors already on my rocks. I took a smaller dry brush and just hit the corners of the rocks to highlight the edges. This is a nice simple step that added loads to the bases. Next for Santa and his elves, I sprayed on a watery red brown all over everything and then I mixed up my dry brush color, a nice little bit of tan. Then I kept to the edges of the rocks mostly and then a gray dry brush. This will be the strongest contrast between lights and darks on the rocks. And there are two very different looking rocks even though they are made from all the same materials. Next I am going to make some icicles, and this is the only time I will be using a Games Workshop flying stand for anything. And you don't even need a flying stand, any clear acrylic rod will work too. I took the flying stand and held it over a candle, rotating it so that the end was heating up evenly. Then I took a pair of tweezers and pinched the end and pulled it. This is pretty tricky to do, but once you get the hang of it, you can make two icicles with each pull. I gave it a few seconds away from the flame to cool down, and then I clipped it on each end, and then in the middle, and this gave me some nice glossy sturdy icicles. And there, I had a nice handful of icicles. I poured out a drop of superglue, and to apply my icicles, I took them in my tweezers, dipped them into the superglue, and then touched it to the model. Once I had one icicle attached and hanging properly, I can use that as a guide on how to hang the other icicles. It's important for all of them to be perfectly parallel so it looks realistic. Well, that sure wasn't easy, but boy, does it look good. It's pretty darn convincing. And it's worked a lot better than a trick I've used in the past, which is to use hot melt glue and you touch it and then you pull it away. It does give you an icicle, but a pretty soft icicle that you don't have a lot of control over, where these are nice and hard and ice-like. And I used one of my favorite little tricks, which is baking soda and a little squeeze tube and super glue. Anytime the icicle didn't mate up perfectly with the rock, I just used a few drops of super glue and then I made it dry instantly with the baking soda. Baking soda acts as a catalyst and it makes the super glue dry instantly and then I just give it a few more coats of super glue on the outside and that makes the baking soda clear. And it makes for some pretty darn good ice. Next it was time for some snow. Now I don't know if Army Painter is the best snow out there, but it sure does sound like real snow. I scooped up some snow and mixed in matte medium and mushed it together. This should make for some nice bright white snow. I mixed in more medium until it was about as thick as toothpaste, and then I took an old brush and applied it to my bases. This worked really well. It worked so well that this must be the intended use, but I've never seen instructions or people mix it up this way. Usually it's applied dry on top of PVA glue like you would apply sand. It's been two hours since I applied the snow and now it's completely dry and it looks fantastic. I am completely shocked. I've been pretty disappointed in this Army Painter snow since I got it. I remember when I first opened up the packaging and I looked at it, I thought, wow, that looks just like packing peanuts. It does not look like snow. I've actually used this stuff as packing peanuts. I painted a model that was a Fallout Wasteland. Uh, it was a Fallout miniature and it had a ripped up teddy bear on the base and I actually used a little bit of this stuff to represent the stuffing falling out of the teddy bear and it worked really, really well. But mixing this with the matte medium, it looks pretty darn good. If you really, really look at it close up, you can see the pellets a little bit. But that could just be the matte medium has completely evaporated. And I bet if I used like a water effect or something that had a little bit more body to it and it didn't completely disappear once it was dry, I bet it would look pretty darn good. And this is only two hours old and it is rock hard. I mean, check this out. That's the snow. That's pretty good after two hours. I am really, really pleasantly surprised by that. Yeah, it's really crunchy. It looks like nice, cold, dry snow. I really like that. And I am noticing just now that I should have applied my grass tuft before I put on the snow. But you know, better safe than sorry, I guess. Better late than never. I also noticed I didn't clean it off my brush and now my brush has rock hard snow on it. Oops. I took out my small tan tufts and prepared to put these onto the bases. I picked spots that did not have snow on them, and really you want to do this first. If I had done this first, I would have a better balance between tough snow and rock. Now it's mostly snow and tufts, but it still looks pretty good. And even though these tufts are small, I cut some of them in half to make them even smaller. 
As you can see, they are pretty snowy, and it's time to apply my minis. Yay! I carefully snapped Kato off his wooden base, and I thought about pinning, but I figured it would just do damage to the paint job. And his big ol' Space Marine feet and dick banner will provide more than enough surface area for a strong super glue bond. For Santa, he already was pinned with a paperclip, so I cut it down to size and drilled a hole right at the end of the rock. Now usually I really like my models to be perfectly centered over the base, but this is a display base and I wanted to try a thing. So I have him basically completely hanging off the edge of the base, and I think it's a neat look. And my fine winter fellas were all base and now it's time for the final finishing touches. The army painter snow is nice, but I want a little bit more of a glittery wet look, so I mixed up some secret weapon crushed glass snow. This stuff looks more like snow, but it's not nearly as white as the army painter stuff, so I think using both of them is a good one-two punch to get perfect snow. I squished this over top of the snow that was there, and my snow looked good before, now it looks perfect. Now I painted Kato to have some object source lighting coming from his claws, so I want to keep that going onto the base, and I took out some silly putty to mask him in preparation for a little airbrushing. Not a very dignified look, but it'll do the job. I took an airbrush and some red ink and just gave a few quick puffs to get a nice red glow. My inspiration for these claws was the heating elements from toasters. I took off the masking and it looked perfect. On Santa, he was looking sharp but he needed some empty bullets, like he has just used that weapon of his. I have a video on exactly how I make these bullets that you can watch here, but I took a tiny plastic rod, painted it gold, and cut off many many tiny sections of it. Now Santa has a machine gun. Ho ho ho. I picked these up with the tweezers, dipped them in PVA glue, and pressed them onto the base. They look pretty good, but the only problem is the exposed cuts are bright white. So I took a sharp brush and some black paint and painted over the exposed sections. I should try to find some super thin black plastic rod, that would help a lot. These models are looking slick, but I've run into a problem that I've run into in the past, and that is that my miniatures don't really look like they belong on the bases. They're painted in a very bright, poppy, high contrast way, which looks wonderful, especially on silly miniatures like this. But the bases kind of look like hyper-realistic model railroad style bases, and they don't quite look like they belong. And one way I found to combat this in the past is to do a false vignette. Make it look like they're standing under a little bit of a spotlight, and it definitely helps make them look a little bit more well blended into the world to make the two kind of cartoony halves come together. I took some Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint, which is a candy color, and sprayed this over the last quarter inch of the base to make it darker. You can make your own transparent paint with black paint and matte medium. This will make the edges of the base darker and bring more attention to the tops of the bases and the miniatures who are standing on them. Lastly, I painted the rim of the base black, and I actually used my airbrush for this. I kept it to the rims, but let just a little tiny bit of paint spill past the rim onto the base to make the vignette even stronger. Twas the day after battle, and Kato had won. Not a creature was living for the swordsman's blade hum. His war claws they hung, laid down with gore, as piles of corpses lay scattered before. Kato's magnificence in battle was never in doubt, as his deeds were legend, known far and about. But it was then that Kato heard such a clamor, he activated his lightning claws to see what was the matter. Blood glistened bright red on the new fallen snow, gave the appearance of hell to the objects below. Then what before Kato's magnificent eyes did appear? but a fat guy with a gun, and a great big white beard. Ah, these models rock! Kato Sicarius on a rock is looking absolutely dope. I'm so glad when I purchased this model, I bought it to convert it into a Black Templar, and I'm so glad I didn't, because now it's one of the best models I've ever painted, and it looks so, so cool. I love the hot red on the lightning claws bouncing onto the base. I love Lightning Claws as just a weapon type in 40k. They're super dumb, but they're super fun. And like that, the silliness of 40k I really, really enjoy. But man, this model turned out really nice. And I'm so happy now to have it on a really, really nice base because now I can show it off. It's just been sitting around for a year, not a year, since like February. This model is now done and it looks so cool and it, it, the base looks so cool. I really, really like how this turned out. And Santa! This one is a year old, and boy, does it look neat. Now Santa, he comes kind of with some basing in mind from Anvil Industries. He's standing on a Santa sack full of presents, and he comes with a couple of other little present accessories. But I kind of like, I kind of like this look. That he's completely out in front of the base, but I think it actually works. Especially since he's more of a display model than a, a miniature that you would play with. I love his bright, silly colors. 
And I think the vignetting does work pretty well to keep the emphasis up on Santa Claus because the white uh, white snow is kind of tricky to put on a base because the white snow is almost certainly going to be brighter than anything on the model. And I've just literally toned down the brightness and it works really, really well. So my photoshopping skills are coming into my painting skills. The icicles look dope. I know they don't make perfect sense because the water would just run down the rock, but I like them. Maybe there's something else dripping down onto the rock and that's why those icicles have formed but it is super, super neat. And I don't know why Santa is wandering around the Arctic with a machine gun, but I'm sure he has a very good reason. I think these bases turned out really good, but hindsight being 2020, I think I would have mixed in just a little tiny drop of blue paint into my snow to give it a little more pop. It is pretty darn realistic and I don't necessarily want realistic. I want fun and eye catching. And with the vignette, even though it is a fake thing, it helps the models be better framed. It gives the models and the bases a nice composition instead of a dude standing on a hole punched out of the earth. These snow bases took all day to put together, and really, it's just not feasible to do this for a whole army. But on a couple of one-off characters, or maybe a vehicle, it's a pretty cool look. The snow was really interesting. I was pleasantly surprised with Army Painter's snow. I like Secret Weapon snow more, but it's a lot more transparent, and it looks really, really wet on the base, and so the Army Painter did a really, really good job of being white, bright, fluffy snow. I don't know how much longer you're going to be able to pick up Secret Weapon Snow, but I know AK Interactive makes a really similar product in their Snow Sprinkles. It's very similar, but it's pre-mixed, and I might have to give that a try if I run out of Secret Weapon. These models are some of the best I've ever painted, and I am super excited for them to be done and not sitting in a drawer. Now I can put them up on the shelves, I can post them on Instagram, and just looking at some of these models that I've tried really hard on has rekindled the try hard in me, and I think pretty soon I'm going to have to go all out on a miniature again. So, four excellent bases finished, and it was really cool this week, and it was really nice to stay inside and recreate the outside world in miniature form. So, let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite, Kato Sicarius or Santa Claus. And just remember that if you don't pick Santa Claus, you go on the naughty list. But now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. An Alpha Legion Aspiring Champion by Look As, A Thousand Sun Sorcerer by Temujin, A Night Haunt Ghost by Visk, An Ultramarine Space Marine by Book of Love, An Alpha Legion Aspiring Champion by Burke, A Bushido Warrior by Heretic Borger, A Tyranid Kill Team by Manning the Fort, Some Beast Naga Orcs by 1313s, An Old Metal Scout by All Nim, A Classic Space Marine by O's Good Black Hand, a Big Mech Drone by Sebelin, some Tau Crisis Suits by Ao O Main, some Orc Shooter Boys by Ninja Knobs, some Forge World Knights by Supramat, an ATSD Walker by The, a Dark Angel Samael by Teabagger, a Kit Bash Necron Chronomancer by The Brush Breaker, some Iron Warriors Terminators by The Living Paint, a Necron Lord by Omer, a Space Marine Librarian Terminator by Khan Industries, a Stormcast Eternal by the Necro Pixie, a Custom Necron Lord by Sea Maniac, a D&D Adventurer by Mr. Fry Guy, and an Orc Commando by Black Lung Raider. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.